We are back. We are back. Who was the final girl, y'all? Who was the final girl? Stay tuned for the video. What's going on, YouTube? You already know who it is. Back at another video for you guys. Yes, we are here for the finale of American Horror Story, 1984, Season 9, Episode 9, Final Girl. It was a lot that went on uh, in this episode, but it was good. I enjoyed this season. I'm going to miss it. Um, but I know, I just know that Ryan Murphy, he's going to bring it for the 10th season because it's going to literally be the 10th season of American Horror Story next year. So I know they're going to have to bring it. They might as well bring everybody that played like some main, main characters on this show back. Like bring them, put them all back, all the OGs, the all-stars. You know, it's got to be, of course, Sarah Paulson. You know, y'all know, if y'all don't know now, I love Sarah Paulson. Um... When I started wa binge watching American Horror Story a couple of years ago, and uh, I got down to Coven, I don't know what it was, but I was just like, I like this woman. I like this woman. I like I love her work and uh, other things that she's done outside of American Horror Story, of course. And then Evan Peters, of course. Come on, Emma Roberts. You know, I really enjoyed her playing uh, Brooke in this season, and some other folks. But we'll get into that later on. So without any further ado, let's get into the review. So once again, we all at the camp, you know, and it, it, it looks a little different, you know. It looks a little different. It looks abandoned. I'm like, you know, where the hell is everybody at? You know, obviously they ghosts. You're going to see them. And uh, we get to know why in a little while. So we see this car pulling up to Camp Redwood. And um, he was like, you know, where are you heading to? We see this guy. Uh, that's one of the, like, characters that's been on previous seasons before I forgot his real name. But, uh, yeah, he's in here. And, uh, you know, they tell him, he, you know, he tells the, the Uber driver, you know, that he's, you know, going to Camp Redwood and whatnot. And so he's walking. You know, he's seeing all this different stuff. He sees a sign that says uh, private property keep out. You know, it looks real old. And he sees like this, uh, I, I, I forgot what you call it exactly, one of them incinerators, I guess you can call it, the little chop of the thing that's up. I guess, you, I guess people use that for trees. If somebody, if I'm wrong, somebody let me know what the hell that was. Um, and it's like got blood in it. So, you know, somebody got bodied in there and we see who at the end. Um, and he sees like the scenery of like the Camp Redwood uh, concert that happened in 1989. It look all toe up and old and bent out of shape. He takes pictures of it and all of that. And before you know it, here goes Montana. She got a whole nother outfit on. She got a blue dress. She still got her hair the same, you know, um, and no wonder she looks all confused because he got this, you know, new tool, this new electronic device in, in uh, her, his hand. And she was like, what the hell is that? And he was like, it's a phone. She was like, that's not a phone. Not realizing, uh, Montana, that, you know, obviously they're not in the 80s. They're not in the 90s. Uh, this is 2019. They are really in the future, 2019. And uh, she gets all intrigued with the phone in his hand. And lo and behold, we find out that this man is Bobby, Jingle Jangle son, Benjamin's son, and he is here to look for his father. So um, Bobby and Montana, they go to this cabin, and basically he was telling her how he's been doing research on the place and, you know, the history behind it. And, you know, like I said, he wants to find out where his father is, and all of a sudden Trevor pops up, you know. And um, he went on to say that his aunt, because we remember when uh, Benjamin dropped uh, the baby off, at his aunt's place when he was a baby because he had to go handle business and get rid of a crazy ass Ramirez. And, uh, you know, he, she basically took care of him until she died. But on her deathbed, she told him that, you know, the truth and everything and about his dad. And, you know, he obviously wanted to find out the truth and where was he. And, uh, they said he, they haven't seen him in years, haven't seen him in a long time. And, uh, she went on to say, somebody brought on a thing about ghost, you know, not from power, though, but them being ghosts, because we all know they're all dead. All these people that Bobby will see is dead. Montana, Trevor, Xavier, the rest of them, everybody dead, everybody dead. So all of a sudden, they get a kick and go on a, they get a kick out of um his little 
weapons and stuff in his backpack and everything. He got a gun and a knife. So Montana, she tell him, I'll shoot me. But no, instead, she shoots her own seven head. Obviously, she knows she's going to come back. Then Trevor finds the big-ass knife, slices his own damn throat. He, they both come back like, you know, this is all fun and dandy. Like, really? So as we all saw, the concert uh, area was all toe up, abandoned, and all out of whack, right? And so we go back to that night. And so we see old crazy-ass Margaret with crazy-ass Bruce and Ramirez. And uh, she's on the phone. She's trying to make sure, you know, the concert is still going and everything is good. And I think somebody wasn't showing up. So Courtney, he comes in the room and he lets her know that Trevor is like blocking people off from coming into the concert, you know. And he said that he accidentally told Trevor that uh, Kaja, you know, Gugu was murdered. You know, we all know Ramirez did that. And, uh, you know, Margaret, of course, she was pissed off and she didn't appreciate it. She said, you're the worst assistant ever. All of a sudden, you know, he tried to, you know, say, you know, you know, make some little peace and, you know, try to calm her down. All of a sudden, he gets popped in the head. And I say, Margaret, you dirty ass bitch. I hope you get what's coming to you. So after getting that news, obviously, Margaret, he goes, well, excuse me, she goes after Trevor. And uh, we see Trevor telling all these people, like, you know, hey, it's canceled. Just go back home. No refunds. Everybody, all these crazy wild kids is mad. They speeding off and shit off a whole damn mountain. Just crazy. Just flying. Like, whatever. But anyway, Margaret, she eventually shows up. Trevor takes the little um knife out the tire or whatever. I don't know how they got there. Okay. After being, you know, having it parked and whatever. So to block people off. And so, you know... Trevor confronted her and basically said, you know, bitch, you're evil. You're evil. I need to get away from you. I found real love, and it certainly ain't from you. You are evil. I don't want nothing to do for you. And I'm going back in town, and I'm filing for divorce. Wish you wouldn't have said that. So anyway, she gets mad, and she was saying, you can't escape from me pretty much. That whole, if I can't have you, no one will. And it turned real snapped on oxygen, like, you know what I'm saying? So she shoots him in the kneecaps. She shoots him in the stomach. She was like, I should have killed you a long time ago or something like that, she said. Or I think he said that. I forgot. And then all of a sudden, after he shoots him there, and then she said, if you die, because, you know, he was outside of uh, Camp Redwood because, you know, they had that little that little banner or whatever, that little sign where it says Camp Redwood. And obviously, you know, you go in there and you're in it already. But he was outside of that. And she was like, you know, you ain't going to see that bitch me in Montana again. So all after all that, she shoots him. In the I was like, damn, Margaret, you filthy, dirty woman, you. And she just drives off in Montana. She so happens to uh, see um, Trevor just laying all out. And, you know, she's being all dramatic. She's like, you know, come on. Come on. So he's limping. You know, he's limping. He's struggling. He's really struggling. And she's like, come on, you can do it. And he's, he's trying. And he eventually stops. He said, I'm sorry. I can't do it. And, you know, he was going to die out there. Because, you know, she told him, if you die outside of Camp Redwood, you know, you're not going to see her again. You know, you're just going to be dead. That's it. You're going to be nothing. No more. And so Brick pop, Brick, Brooke pops up out of nowhere. And Montana's like, don't touch him. You already took my brother away. Don't take him away. I'm like, girl, shut up. He, she didn't kill your brother, okay? She didn't kill your brother. Her crazy, abusive ass, controlling ass boyfriend and was going to soon to be husband killed your brother. Get it right, Montana. But anyway, as Trevor was struggling and was continuing to bleed out, uh, Brooke helped him up and put him back in Camp Redwood. And Montana was like, why are you helping me? And Brooke was like, because, bitch, I'm not like you. I'm not evil and hateful and spiteful like you. And she walks the hell away. And so Trevor, you know, he finally made it back in there. As he's holding on to Montana, he bleeds out and he dies. And she's like, it's okay. You can come. You can go. Because she know he's going to come back right back. And so he's right behind her. She drops his dead body and she goes back to the reincarnated or reincarnated excuse me, or uh, resurrected Trevor. And they all kissing and being all romantic and stuff. It's just real dark romantic humor comedy mess and so montana went on to say how after that she kind of you know turned for the better you know she realized she was becoming a hateful person and she wasn't she wasn't she didn't want to be that anymore so um bobby still wanted to know why you know why why did all of this happen why why did this you know why did the killing stop or whatever like that and so you know trevor and them bought up you know they had to get rid of margaret and her two little homeboys, you know, her two, her backup, uh, Bruce and Ramirez. And then, so we flash back again. And so Bruce is trying to kill this girl, you know, because all he do is kill women, you know, because he got, he got, he got probably mommy issues or something. And he was talking about, you're going to be, 
you know, my next, you know, solo kill or something like that. And all of a sudden, Trevor came out of nowhere and slid his neck and blood is just gushing out of him like he's a human gusher. And he was like, you know, I'm sorry, but you can't die on this property. So he kicks him and he rolls off wherever he rolled off into, probably into the fiery pits of hell because that's where he needs to be, him and his no thumbs having ass. And then we see um, we see Ramirez, he's walking, and then Montana, she pops up out of nowhere and they do their little reuniting. And uh, she was, you know, trying to, like, lure him in. Because, like I said, this is all a setup to get rid of their asses. So they got rid of Bruce. And they got to get rid of Ramirez. And so she was basically telling him, you know, Billy Ida wants to meet him. And, you know, he kind of, like, no. Nah, and, like, turned around. I thought he was going to slit her throat with that damn Candyman hook he had in his hand. And she was like, oh, please, come on. Stop tripping. Billy Ida wants to meet you, you know. Just a little quick dialogue. Wasn't nothing too important. So... They take him, well, she takes him to a shed, and he was like, where's Billy Idol? And he was like, Montana was like, she, he's coming. And all of a sudden, the counselor with the long hair locks the door. Finally, we see Birdie, because Birdie, she was nowhere to be found. She pops up, Xavier pops up, Chet, all the crew, everybody that then died on this camp. And all of a sudden, my uh, Bruce, who was Bruce? Bruce. Not Bruce. Ramirez, he turns around and Montana stabs his ass. And she was like, this is my redemption. You deserve to die. You about to get by. And before you know it, he they lay his ass out on the damn ground. And everybody got butcher knives and butchers and knives and everything. And they all start taking the stab and jab and slice and dice. They just start fucking him up real bad. All of a sudden, they get off him after all that blood gushes out of him like some damn gushers. There's a pile, big ass bowl of gushers just everywhere. He's just covered in blood, dark ass blood too, because you know he worships the devil, so that's why his blood is so damn dark. Like he look, he get he a hot. It was just blood everywhere. It looked disgusting, and so he kept on saying, "I'll be back." And my time was like, "Bitch, I'm counting on this." Slit his damn throat, and he bleeds the fuck out, and he dies. But Bobby was like, you know, why trap him here? You know, what I'm saying he gonna like haunt y'all and stuff. And so, uh, basically, they went on to explain to him every time he wakes up. He's going to be on death watch. So basically, every that means everybody here is going to get a turn to take a whack at him. Every time he wake up, they're going to be ready and prepared for him and kill his ass dead every damn time. So he wakes up the first time, and Ray, he misery his asses. You know what I'm saying? Like, he has like a little, a big old hammer, a mallet, whatever you call it, knocks his damn kneecaps off. And then he going to start talking about, Ramirez start talking about, oh, give me strength, father, and all that crap. And then Chet stabs him in the head. He's like, you will never see peace. You know what I'm saying? Or something like that. Something like that. Something to that magnitude. And so he dies again. He wakes up again and he gets chopped in the eyes with axes by um, two girls. I forgot exactly who they were, but everybody got a turn to whack his ass off and not in a good way. And basically they are all doing this to protect him, meaning Bobby from um, Ramirez. Because remember... Ramirez was going out to Alaska to kill Bobby Butt. That's why they were all doing that for over 30 years. They've been constantly killing his ass. Every time he wake up, they'd be ready and prepared for him. However, Bobby still got a hard head. He said he still wanted to see where his dad is. And they was like, dude, your dad is dead. We haven't seen him. You know, he hasn't been he hasn't been around for over 30 years. What you finna do? What's going on? Where you finna find him at? He said he still want to find his dad. And so we get to 20 minutes early. We get we uh before all that happened when he was talking about how he still want to find his dad. And we see Chet and Birdie chilling and waiting for Ramirez to wake up so they can kill him again. And Birdie was like, you know, he's taking too long to wake up. So she goes over there chilling and he start she start flirting with uh Chet, like, you know, I know you done had both, you done you done been with both sides of the peanut butter sandwich, so why can't I put the jelly on you, you know, here, yeah, I don't think you're ready for this jelly, basically, that's what she was telling him, you know, and so they start flirting, she get a little close, before you know it, they start kissing, and you see why they getting all distracted and trying to flirt with each other and stupid ass, dumb ass shit like that, Ramirez, all that black demonic devil smoke is hovering over him, and it unties his hands, I'm like, this motherfucker about to get free, and before you know it, he was like, you know, well, y'all done opened up Pandora's box, he had a knife in his hand, so obviously he probably stabbed him or some shit, and before you know it, he obviously broke out of there, and he's going back to that cabin, and that's where we he overheard them from the outside. He overheard uh, Bobby talking about how he wants to find his dad, and he over here smirking. He's getting all excited, and before you know it, he busts the hell in the damn cabin. He busts the hell in the damn cabin. He's trying to stab Bobby, so Trevor, you know, guards him, guards him out the way, you know, 
pushes him, you know, shields him and everything. And Montana tells him to run. And so, you know, Trevor is getting stabbed up once a damn again. So Bobby runs outside and uh, Ramirez is, you know, obviously going after him. And then Birdie and Chet, they come out of nowhere, I believe. Well, Ray popped up out of nowhere first because he had, Bobby had bumped into Ray. And then that's when Ray tackled Ramirez from trying to get to Bobby. And so Montana was telling him to run again, I believe. And then Birdie and Chet popped up. And they was like, you know, get the hell out of here. They was all telling him, go, go, go. And all of a sudden, Bobby is running. And then he gets stabbed in the back of Ramirez through the damn knife like it was one of them little darts or something. I'm like, this motherfucker, he just, you just can't keep his ass down. And so, you know, he go Ramirez talking his mess. Talking about some, you know, I've been planning to kill you. And I'm going to enjoy this. You know, you're going to suffer. Because Montana told him, you know, we're protecting you because Ramirez was going to be out to kill you. And he, he wasn't just going to kill you. He was going to make you suffer. You know, that's the type of evil-ass, motherfucker-ass dude that he is. I was like, here we go again. And so, anyway, they catch back up to Ramirez. They kill him off. They get ready to kill him off again. And Montana tells him to go to uh, speak, to, go to the asylum, I believe she told him, to go speak with the uh, medical director. And so, he goes. He finally gets back to the asylum where his dad was. And so he's at the front desk. He's telling this lady he needs to speak with the medical director. She wasn't really trying to hear it. He slammed his damn hand on the table like, look, I need to speak with the medical director. She was like, okay, sit down. I'll be right with you. So she get on the phone and says, you know, somebody needs your attention. And so we thinking the medical director is coming out. We're hearing all these doors or whatever. And these two men, they trying to take him back into the damn crazy room to put a straight jacket on him. And he was like, no, I'm not here for that. And all of a sudden, Donna comes out of nowhere. When uh, Bobby had mentioned something about uh, Benjamin, you know, he said his dad's name. And Donald's like, I know your father. Because, you know, uh, Bobby had said, I, you know, I'm his, you know, he was my father. I'm his son. And so they go in the back room. And so we see Donna, you know, she, you know, she's gotten a little older. And basically she had went on to tell him about the story about, you know, Jingle Jangles being up in the asylum. And, you know, he was an innocent man. And Bobby was like, but all the killings. And he was, and well, excuse me, Donna was like, he didn't do it. He had somebody that plotted out the whole thing. Margaret crazy ass. And so, you know, Bobby, of course, he didn't see what happened at the camp. So, obviously, he wouldn't know what happened and how all that set up and how Brooke went down for Margaret crazy lying ass. And Donna said, you know, she'll give it to Margaret. You know, she plotted that shit out pretty good. But she said that shit all had to end and she got what she deserved that Halloween night. So, we flash back to that Halloween night and we see Margaret as she talking on the phone again about whatever she was talking about. And all of a sudden the phone cuts off and then the lights cut off. So she looks a little concerned. And so Xavier was like, Margaret, you bitch, or something like that. And she looks outside. It's everybody outside. Margaret, well, not Margaret, uh, Bertie, Xavier, the rest of the kids, they all, the counselors, everybody outside waiting for her ass with fire torch. They all stand up with their own torch. It was looking real Roanoke-like, you know what I'm saying? When they was all standing outside the house and shit looking all creepy, like it was real Roanoke right there. So shout out to you, Ryan Murphy, and everybody else who came up with that little plot looking out the windows and shit. They all looking like they was finna throw them damn torches in her ass. So, you know, of course, Margaret, what the hell is she gonna do? Go outside and, you know, she know what, what, what's coming. So she locks the door. She locks herself in. And she gets her gun. She looking for the bullets. And while she doing that, she she distracted, mind you. Donna comes out of nowhere and, like, slices her arm with a butcher knife or something like that. And so she pushes on the wall. And Margaret manages to uh, push Donna on the floor with her foot or whatever, like, kick her down. And then starts, like, pistol whipping her on her damn face. Her nose bleeding and all that. And then Brooke comes out of nowhere and... You know, pushes on like this mirror or something. The shit breaks. And she manages to stab Margaret. However, Margaret ends up shooting Brooke. And then Brooke, she just falls flat on the floor. And I'm like, is Brooke dead? She just going to die like that? Like, there ain't no way in hell she going to have a weak-ass death like that. We got a bullshit of that. So Donna sees it. She's like, hell no. Oh, my God. And so Donna, she goes to open the door. Uh, Trevor and maybe I think it was Chet. They grab her ass, you know, Donna had told her, take Mark, take her ass, get her ass out of here. So they take her and, um, and basically she was telling on the story of how Margaret got what she deserved that damn night. So they took her ass up to the front of where Camp Red, you see the Camp Redwood sign and they was getting ready for her ass. So they holding her arms out and, uh, basically Trevor's like, bitch, you about to die. They went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. This scene was crazy as fuck. All of a sudden Trevor 
cuts off both her arms. She starts screaming. They laughing at her ass because that's what the hell she gets. And they put that shit in the little incinerator thing, whatever you call it, the little tree chopper. Somebody let me know exactly what that thing is uh, in the comment section because I forgot what you call it. I've seen, I've seen it before, but I forgot what was the name of it exactly. Um, and so the little, you know, after they chop the thing up, you know, that stuff comes out on the other side. They made sure to put it over the gates so she can't, you know, come back in Camp Redwood. Um, so they chop off her arms. And so she falls flat on the ground, you know, because she ain't got no more arms. And then uh, Chet and Xavier, I believe, they chopped up. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Yep, I was right. They chop off her leg. She's screaming some more. And then all of a sudden, they put what they put those two in incinerator. All that blood comes gushing out, and so she was like, "Oh, it doesn't matter now. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm dying right now." And uh, Montana was like, "Girl, the brain can still function for 30 more seconds or whatever." So she lifts her ass up, you know, she ain't got no legs, <laughs> she ain't got no arm, just a body and a head. Chops her motherfucking head off. They put the rest of her body in the incinerator, and then they put the head in there, and the shit is just like the blood is just gushing the fuck out. Just blood every damn way. It's, it's just a mess. It's just blood and it's probably stank and funky and just ugh. And now we are back at the present. And Bobby was like, so basically you're the final girl. And, you know, Donna was like, I guess so. And, you know, Bobby had went on to thank Donna for those, uh, those checks and stuff. You know, he's been getting and stuff over time. And so um, Donna was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I ain't, I ain't send no money. And he was like, so maybe you aren't the final girl then. So who, who's out there? I had thought maybe Benjamin was out there. We don't know. And so it's raining. It's raining. Donna's in the car looking for some binoculars at this place that, you know, the checks were sent from. Some type of pharmacy or some store or whatever. And so um, Bobby, he gets in the car. And, you know, he was like, did you, you recognize anybody? She was like, no. And so there's this truck. And she was like, oh, my God. I think she saw a woman or something. So they go to the house. They knock on the door. And boom, it's Brooke. Brooke ain't dead. I was happy. Brooke made it out alive. She up in her nice little peaceful ass home. She got pictures. She got a new husband. She got a beautiful family. She just living her life. But honestly, obviously Donna, she wasn't, she was feeling the type of way she was hurt because she thought that Brooke was dead. And so um, Brooke, she felt bad and she wanted to tell Donna, um, you know, but every time she called on the phone, she just would hang up because she said when she heard her voice, she would just get all shaky and nervous. And, you know, Donna was like, girl, you mean to tell me I felt so bad because I thought I just left you there and you was dead and I couldn't do nothing about it. And Brooke was like, I, like I said, I wanted to tell you, but I just didn't know what to say. And so we flash back to that night again. We thought that Brooke was dead for sure and I was going to be mad as hell. So Ray, he goes in the room and he finds Brooke on the floor. You know, he all upset. He crying. He kisses on the forehead. She wakes the hell back up. So I'm guessing Ray is the good ghost out of all of them. You know what I'm saying? When you think about it. Um... And, you know, she, she realizes, you know, she's in pain because she's been shot. And, you know, Ray was like, the bullet went through. So he just says, you know, put pressure on, just hold on. And she tells him about the iodine. He remembered about the iodine. He goes to get the iodine and puts it on the wound. You know, it burns her a little bit. You know, she's screaming and everything. And so she was like, I can't die here. And he was like, hell no. You got to get up out of here. You deserve the fuck better. So he picks her on up. And he carries on on out like the way you exit out of Camp Redwood. And, you know. They say their last, their last goodbyes and, you know, she was telling him thank you and that, you know, you don't deserve this either. And, you know, they kiss each other and everything. And once again, like I said, um, <laughs> she thanks him and, you know, she walks her little self on out of there and she falls down. And that's when she said she thought she was in heaven because she woke up in this white room. These nurses that were taking care of her, but she was still alive. She made it on through and she said she went on north and she kept going and she eventually found a new man, a doctor, that a doctor. And they had some beautiful children together. She had her family that she wanted, you know what I'm saying? But because but she wasn't because she wasn't gonna get it with that old crazy abusive uh, fiance of hers, soon to be husband at the damn church. That was just crazy. But yep. So yeah, she made it. And so of course Bobby he wanted to know why she was sending all the checks and you know the money and stuff. Why you know why did she do all that? And she went on to say that um, just like what Donna was saying, uh, she tried to give Brooke a better life, but that camp. That whole thing of the camp pulled her back in, and, you know, she had thought it killed her, but it didn't. And so Brooke, you know, she kind of said something similar, you know, something about that camp. It just pulls you back in. And, of course, him wanting to know about what happened to his dad, of course, that's why he went going, he went running back to that camp. 
And so she was saying she was just trying to do something, you know, good for her and for him. And so he wouldn't have to live through that darkness. And so, you know, they all reunite and they all, um, what's that word? They all kumbaya and she, and Brooke tells Donna, you know, I hope that, you know, you can forgive me. And she was like, you know, I guess we're both the final girls. And so they shake each other hand, you know. And so hopefully they'll just be, you know, chilling at these little old ladies and stuff later on in their lifetime. And so Bobby, though, he still wants to go back to the camp. He got a hard head. And Donna's like, Brooke was right. Something about that camp just keeps on dragging you on back. And so Bobby thanks her for everything. And he walks on down and goes back to the camp. So. You know, he's looking out into the sunset, and here go Margaret. She pops up out of nowhere. He was like, you're Margaret. And Margaret's like, you're Jingles Jr. I said, <laughs> oh, God. And so she knew who he was, and she says that she knew where Jingles was, I believe. And he was like, I don't really trust you. I'm not going over with you. She was like, okay, fine. Don't find out where your daddy is. I don't care. So she walks off, but he eventually follows her. And uh, I should have known... I should have known her little sneaky ass was trying to do something. So she was like, all these years or whatever, I've been waiting. And he, she was like, waiting on what? And she was like, to kill you. And just when I thought she was going to stab Bobby, Jingles comes up out of nowhere and takes that knife that she was going to kill him with, reverses it, and stabs her in the damn head. I said, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, son. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And after all that, Jingles, because he didn't recognize him at first, um... Bobby was like, well, Jingles had said, we got to get you out of here because she'll be back. So Bobby hugged Jingle Jangles. And it was just a touchy moment. And he realized, because he called him dad, and he realized, he said, he said, why did you come back here? And he said, he just wanted to tell him thank you, you know. Because he was like, you know, all the bad that happened, he said, you know, you did, you, you did the good thing as a parent. You know, you protected me from all of this going on. And so Jingles said, you know, you could be, you could be safe now. You know, you don't have to worry about this place anymore. Don't come back here no more. Just just leave. And so Margaret crazy as she stabs uh jingle jangles. And so Bobby runs off. And he runs into um what would have been his grandmother, you know, the mama in a white dress. And uh, you know, Margaret is chasing behind him and she was like, Bitch, leave him alone. She teleports past Bobby. She was like, he deserves a good life. And so she uh slices Margaret's throat and you know, she goes back to um, Bobby, and she was like, you know, you have a handsome face, just like uh, Bobby would have when if he would have grown up. And, uh, you know, she walks off. Well, no, she turns around, and the rest of the crew pops up as they about to damn near kill Margaret again. Montana tells um, Bobby, you know, run away and never return on some scar type of shit from the Lion King. You know, she was like, you know, tell all the ghost stories about us to your kids. You know, the 80s will forever live on. And she was like, you know, just get out of here. Get out of here, Bobby. You know, my time, she's getting all emotional and stuff again. And, you know, he's leaving for real this time. And, you know, right before he gets ready to leave, he looks back and he sees his dad, his grandma, and uh, what would have been um, his uncle had Bobby wouldn't have, you know, got killed in the damn lake and all that. You know, they say they final goodbyes. They wave. He's a little, little emotional. And you know, he finally walks off. And that's the end of the episode. Well, you guys, this was one hell of a season. It was very interesting. And I must say, I really enjoyed um, the different, you know, vibe of uh, this one, 1984. They really, like, took it back to the 80s. Hold on. It's a little hot in here. I enjoyed this season. Like, they really took it back to the 80s. You know, some people was complaining about, you know, how they switched up the, uh, the theme song. And I was like, it's the perfect fit. Like, this, the damn name of the season is 1984. Like, I loved how they flipped that shit around and made that shit sound like, you know, and look like I was watching some old 80s horror show. Like, I loved it. So, you know, shout out to Ryan Murphy. You know, everything can't, you know, you can't please everybody. You know, some people gonna never, ain't gonna never be satisfied. My thing is, if you don't like the shit, you ain't got to watch it. You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna do all that complaining, don't watch it. Don't watch it. Uh, cause that's what y'all, some of y'all did, uh, last season for, what was that, Apocalypse? Season, uh, eight. Me personally, I enjoyed it. It was crazy as hell. The whole nuclear bomb thing, end of the world thing, that was, you know, that was something very interesting. And then, uh, Michael Langdon, uh, beautiful ass, uh, Cody, that beautiful man, uh, being the Antichrist and stuff and how it was like a generational thing afterwards. You know, we saw how that all played out. 
And then when they brought the witches back, I was like, I was here for that. When I heard that music, and when I saw Cordelia, honey, with that hair swinging, and when I saw Myrtle, Balenciaga, and motherfucking Madison, I said, it's a <laughs> it's a motherfucking rap. And I was here for it, but, cause we all know in every season of American Horror Story, it's a different theme every time, so. I'm 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 curious to see what Ryan Murphy is going to do because I heard that um, they were going to be um, doing another season based on Coven, so we'll see how that plays out. Um, if not, I'm still curious anyway because, like I said, next year is going to be the tenth season of American Horror Story. So I know Ryan Murphy ain't an idiot; he got to do it big because, like I said, it's going to be on for ten seasons, basically ten years since American Horror Story has been on. That's crazy. That's Ray the fuck Z, but I'm here for it and I can't wait to see because you know how he do when he put it all subliminal. He's going to put a picture out, a post, or he's going to put the name of the new season, what that's going to be. So I'm here for it. But anyway, like I said, this was a pretty good season. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed all the episodes and I hope you guys enjoyed all my reviews on, well, most of the episodes because some, some days um, I didn't miss the episode. I just, I just wasn't able to do reviews, but I hope you guys enjoyed most of them. And if you did, and if you made it to the end of this one, please hit the like button. Comment below. What did you think about this season overall? Did you like it? Did you not? Um, and if you guys could take a guess, right? If you guys could take a guess, what do you think um, the next uh, season is going to be about? You know, what, what, what do you think the theme is going to be? Y'all let me know in the comment section. And also, since I brought it up, what is some of your, what is one of your favorite seasons of American Horror Story? Let me know in the comment section as well as anything else I can react to for you guys. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to do that. Don't just leave. Okay. Like the video. Subscribe. Follow me on my Instagram. And hit that notification bell so you guys can know when I have a video up and loaded. Once again, thank you all for watching. I will see you all for season 10 of American Horror Story. I cannot wait to see what this is going to be about. I hope you all are just as excited. And I will see you all later. It's Taylor Rain. And I'm out. Oh.